<clears throat> What's up, guys? It's your boy, GRC. This is Crypto in the Morning. Woo! I'm feeling pretty good this morning. Let me think for two seconds, guys. Whoa, whoa, whoa. The comments are going off. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. Let's get to these comments, guys. We'll get to the stuff in one minute. PVM, first in year. Here for a good topic. Listen in on alpha mode. Yeah, to be honest, I did not finish studying Pulse Chain and a theory, and a, the Binance Smart Chain validators versus the Pulse Chain validators. I didn't finish researching, so I'm going to sound stupid if I miss something. So I think we're going to revisit Colt Dow today and talk to Gunther and potentially Tangent about a couple things. I have questions maybe that Gunther will know about the validator validators as well which will be interesting because as i learn more about that stuff i get interested by weird stuff that people don't learn about so like the validators is a lot of is a thing that people kind of like just hear people say but i don't think they ever really look into what's actually going on nuts and bolts wise and i think it's important to know everything when you're in crypto if you want to you know i guess maybe not but i enjoy it so guys i don't have too much to say this morning you know the weekend was kind of wild the hexagons are absolutely weird and crazy. You guys should stop doxing each other's wallets and stuff. Like, just really be nicer and everyone's lying and not lying. Just be honest. It's not that hard. You're not as rich as, or cool as you say, nor am I, nor is anyone. It's just the way it is. We're all normal-ass people. Some of us have bigger biceps than others. Yes, okay? <laughs> that would be me. But that's not the point. The point is, if you have something to do in your own life, you should have so much to do. And I just want everyone to be nice and friendly to each other. Because why all the hate, guys? Lots of good stuff going on. So much good stuff going on we can learn about. So let's get pumped up a little bit. Let's get into the intro song, guys. Let's see what happens today. I have no idea. Gunther and uh, Tangent aren't even in here yet. We have Sam in the background chomping at the bit to get in front of the camera because he wants to talk crypto, period. Let's get into it, guys. Two minutes and two seconds. Young folks, you tripping on them, motherfucker. Rich your heart. Rich your heart. Bought my hex from the fucking start. Oh. Point one in every day we mark. Buy my hex from the fucking start. Sacrificing all this bread like I'm rich at heart. Got paid on big payday and I had a hairy start. Now I'm checking on my pulls just to check my heart. Buy my hex from the fucking start. Sacrificing all this bread like I'm rich at heart. Got paid on big payday and I had a hairy start. Now I'm checking on my pulls just to check my heart. Checking my metamask moving. Look at the hex he has mooning. Looking at why they be choosing. Peter is why they be losing. Pro chains out and get me a check. He's gas up and got me a mess. Remember the times he died collect. Hex I'm eating, I'm dying in the best. Getting this back like a year ago. Getting this post, I ain't letting go. Swerve in the ring like a Lambo. Getting this back like a year ago. Getting this post, I ain't letting go. Swerve in the ring like a Lambo. Buy my hex from the fucking start. Sacrificing all this bread like I'm rich at heart. Got paid on big payday and I had a hairy start. Now I'm checking on my pulls just to check my heart. Buy my hex from the fucking start. Sacrificing all this bread like I'm rich at heart. Got paid on big payday and I had a hairy start. Now I'm checking on my pulls just to check my heart. Sup? Good morning. I hope you had an awesome weekend. I know I had an awesome weekend. Looking forward to talking to some Gunther, uh, some Gunther guns today, and touching on uh, call again. We're also going to touch on some 
MRI later in the show, very briefly. Uh, You're gonna ask? Are you gonna poop on it? It's possible. It is. It is possible. You guys are gonna have poop on it. It is possible. That's it. I had a feeling Sam was gonna tell me he (laughs) disliked MRI long before he started reading the white paper, and he confirmed all of that after (laughs) after reading the white paper. You know, in total contrast to what we went over yesterday, right? something that I thought was going to be stupid. I didn't even know it was legit. Like, and it passed all the four pillars. Like, and you're like, this is I kind of like, interesting. Well, once you, once I started working through, cause I kept trying to figure out where the problem was, but it all, they made it double back on itself, everything. So they kept it all decentralized. And uh, that's what was different about it. Right. But again, we don't know if Hex's price performance is solely the feature of the OA that is so important in it, or is that more of, you know what I mean? So like, that's kind of because we get into price performance at the end of the day. Right. And then you have to look at adoption and the OA has proven to do a thing this way, which is proven to be a feature. And with this feature, they're kind of saying, let's get out of that and see if we can do a self-regulating system within the largest bag holder voting 1.96% of the supply, or I think it's around that number. So that's pretty crazy because it's scary to think all those people with all that money, but at the same time, the way they did the system, I'd love to talk to an expert. I would love to talk to an expert on this. So if there's anyone that knows an expert, please just, um, just hit, hit us up. up. Have you come to any conclusions about anything about what we talked about yesterday? uh, with uh, with the cult Dow, I think that's very interesting. Now, when you contrast that with Hex, obviously Hex is super interesting and it's more based on the financial side of things, right? Because you're earning a trustless yield, right? Um, yes, the, the there's, you know, the OA address owns a bunch of it, right? Feature, but potentially a risk depending on how you how you view that, right? Depending on where you're coming from, shit could happen, right? Shit happens all the time. <clears throat> but it also aids in terms of price performance, right? And it seems to be acting in a manner that is Decent. in line, yeah, in line with that goal of like performing, you know. Well, what do you look for, well, Sam? When the when when the chart's going down, what do you look? For? I'll tell you what I look for. Just those buyers, right? That deck scanner. I want to see the ratio. So, like, this is how I look into things when I'm not asking anyone, right? So this is the first thing in the morning before I start asking people questions, right? I like to look into my own shit. I like to call people out on their stuff if they haven't paid attention. So, and then it gives you a better perspective on what other people are kind of saying and thinking. Anyway, so I look in the morning at everything and I'm getting all jazzed up and I'm a little faded, you know, in the morning and really enjoying myself with the coffee. And I started looking at all this stuff and I started looking at, um, what we, oh, the buys and sells on Colt, right? And the buys and sells it. Well, first I went to Hex, went to Deck Screener, scrolled down on the Hex pair. You know, you know, there's just a lot of buys, and I'm not looking at the U.S. dollar value. I'm looking at the heads, right? How many heads are in there? Who wa- who wants this to work? How many people? Where's the adoption, right? That's <clears throat> like that's where the adopt. You got to look at adoption because if I promise you, if you go over to some of these other chains and you go to their Deck Screener, Sam, it'll look nothing like it. It's like VC VC, like random noob. Yeah, yes. And when you look at the hex, uh, when we were looking at it, we looked at it several times last week or over the last couple of weeks. You look in there and there might be like a big dump. Well, not even a big dump, but like, you know, a hundred grand uh, dump uh, on the market. And then there's like 10 or 12, like small buys, right? And maybe not enough to compensate for the sell. Yeah, it doesn't clearly- matter if the price is eventually, <laughs> but it's like, it's about adoption like you i want to see those numbers because when things go the other way everyone's going to be buying because that's how it works so we yes. know that wave's coming so it's like how big's your army i would love i would love and maybe there's a resource that somebody knows of uh a website that tracks like the number of people who are coming into a uh, something or purchasing it on a daily basis uh relative to other cryptocurrencies also the the staking feature right i know they're on independent sites and stuff but that would be super interesting because how else are we going to gauge how else are we going to gauge exactly the adoption right because well, adoption of- adoption is what it is exactly again people people point to a lot of different things like so much smoke and mirrors right 
And it's like, no, it's dudes at their desk clicking one button. That's what, you have, that's what you have to narrow it down. I narrow it all the way down to that. Like a man like me grabbing his mouse, going through these steps. How much does it take to go through these steps? Clicking this button and obviously the financial resources. That's not what I'm worried about. I'm worried about how many men within the group of people that do have money because that, 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 that amount of people is not going to change. Can they get to this point? How hard is it? And Hex has been interesting to say the least because it's not – it's pretty clunky, dude. I swear to God it's kind of clunky. And I'm not talking about the price chart. The price chart is the best in the business. But I'm trying to get these normal people to do Hex stuff and I'm giving up. Period. I don't have enough time in the day. I have to do my stuff. I cannot explain to my dad. My my dad watches this show, and I love my dad. One of the hardest working people on the planet protected me and picked me up and saved me from probably dying five times. So thank you, Dad. But he didn't know you could sell hex for USDC. He thought that hex. He was like, I thought he he was like, you can't sell any of your shit. And I was like, what do you mean? We and he we didn't should. even realize like he and, but I've done this show and kind of explained it to him. But the <clears> gap, <throat> what I'm talking about is just the gap. It's like I can't even talk to them about it because I'm like, until it's five dollars, that's when you'll pay attention or whatever. Like once it mm -hmm. goes on the news. No, which is crazy. I think it might be an interesting show, like maybe once a month or something, to bring on somebody who is brand new but has an open mind and is curious. Has an open mind, is curious, that is willing to ask those questions that we might not even think about. Like, yeah, you can sell your hacks for anything you want to sell it for, right? When I when I was describing uh, investing to my girlfriend, this is back when she I got her to invest in Tesla. And she wasn't sure how she could get her money. Like, so you put it in there and then you're fucked. Like you just, you just put your money in there and then you're done. Uh, well, I was like, yeah, kind of, but you could always sell it if you want to. You can take your money out if you so choose. But some people don't realize Another that. Another thing I'm learning on mm -hmm. that note, Sam, and Bullish is talking to me from experience, just be it not, it's not, I'm, it's not all about crypto, but Bullish has been wrecked in the past from not selling. Not from not buying. Bullish, do you want to tell that? Do you want to tell that story, Bullish? Because that's a good that's a good story. Not specifically, but he was mentioning like I'm learning as he goes on his journey. I'm on my journey too. No one's paying my bills for me. Please, guys, no one. So stop it. Don't think that you're allowed to think that I like good men. I like honest men. I like Motley Investor, for example. I like Motley Investor. Why? I don't know what the fuck he's doing on the side. I don't even really care. He's proven to me time and time again that he is respectful to me. He's honest and he shows me respect. And I'm for no reason other than I'm a heck. He thinks I, I'm a nice guy, cool guy, vice versa. And he helped me before I even knew what Hex was. He invited me to stream <clears throat> with him, stuff like this. I know who was there. I was there. I was just new. So I can see these things as I progress. And like, I, I always ask Motley, like, is this person a good guy? What do I ask? I don't ask, does he have crypto? Does he sell crypto on people's heads? Does he do this, that, and the other? I say, is he a good guy? What do you think? I'll ask Wendy's. I'll ask Crypto Gains Club, right? I don't ask about what they're doing. I ask about, have they been consistent in their life? Have they showed up for people? Sam, there's not too many people that can point at Sam and say, man, he's really been weird and inconsistent. And me neither, mm -hmm. because it's like I haven't. Correct, correct. No, I I, I agree. I agree. There's uh, getting back to the cult thing and the quality of the individual, <clears throat> because there's so similarities in the the mission behind cult versus the mission behind say hex. And you look at those and right one is to increase decentralization decrease centralization and and just purport that type of stuff forwards as in the call DAO, or in the hex's case the trustless yield just get your money to work for you and promoting uh, uh thinking for yourself or self-improvement so to speak and so waiting you, you see that reputation. within hex now right mm -hmm. like you feel that within the like you you understand that a lot of us do take value in that piece of it that's like i want to wait past i because i like to wait because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. i can work in the meantime because it changes guys you like, when you do that when you guys, wait for like, shit. guys like me are just looking for time i need time 
I don't need money really, but yes, of course I need to get my resources for what I'm doing, but I need time. People trust me. People think I can do the work that I need to do. I have the approval of the people that I want to have the approval from. I need to work. So what do I want? Yes. My time back because mm -hmm. I need to push. I don't care about like making money for the sake of like making money. Want to build something make, that's much bigger. I have to, or I won't feel like I succeeded right. For mm -hmm. me though, that's where I'm at, you know? And and that's where you get this, well, that's where you get this overlap, I see, between those two communities. And I think this is like the we're talking about adoption. And how do you how do you go through and drive adoption? Right? Is by understanding those pieces that make something secure, that increase the trust in the system, right? And you see so many similarities between these two projects. You're like, wow, there's no admin keys. That's interesting. Wow, they're both audited. Oh, that's cool. Wow, all these things going back and forth between the two of them. You're like, super interesting. Different missions, different missions. But there's a, so much overlap in the mission and in the, the security pieces of it. I'm like, this is cool. And I think that's a perfect opportunity to go into that community and continue to help those people in that community get into every community, right? Like we've been talking about this the last couple of days. I've been increasing my outreach on, uh, what's up, C CI? How you doing? You want to say what's good to CI? Thanks, thanks, Sam and GRC. You developed to my favorite stream to be. Thank wow, that's that means a lot because I have been getting – and Sam has been getting, first of all, Sam's tweaked with his mic and people are happy about that. So I'm happy about that. But other than that, people have been commenting and I've been returning all my YouTube comments. Like this morning I was getting to them and so people are saying some stuff about the show that's very inspiring because they're saying that it's their favorite show and that they're excited to watch it every single day. And that's exciting to me because that means I'm doing good. And that means what I'm doing is effective. And I think it is too, because I work harder than anyone that would be doing this because I love it the most, or, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I just love it. Like I, this is all I want to be doing. I told my sister, I was talking to my sister yesterday. I was like, I would live in your shed and do this. If someone said I had to do the other way around. Right. Right. Cause you just don't want to go. Back. I just didn't care. Like I was just like, this is the path I'm going down. I don't care. Like I'll be there in a year or two years or whatever. This will all be a faded memory and I'll have kept working every single day and then we'll see. You know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love, I'm a we'll see kind of guy like and I rarely end up on the wrong side of that. But come on, I'm a human, too. I make very big mistakes all the time and I am absolutely erratic half the time. Dude, I've been Dixon Piper all about that cash flow because he'll never come on my show. Dude, once, once this guy, I'm not even going to talk about him. I watch his show. Everybody go follow his YouTube. But Jesus, Lord, this is this dude is a genius. I, don't, I mean, I don't know if he's a genius, but he knows a lot about crypto and macro and uh, finance and everything. So if you want to watch his shows on his channel, boy. Come on, come, come on here. And, uh, you should do an interview, Dixon. Uh, we should chat crypto sometime, bro. That would be an interesting conversation. So getting back into getting to other communities, the um, I see the blanket on the wall. So I'm reading the comments as I do this. I think it is helping. Also, this thing is right. I don't know if you guys can see, but there's the mic is directly in front of me. So we're both focus of us on caring about what you these people listen for one or hour, one point five mm -hmm. hours per day, and I'm telling you, they're used to listening to Richard Hart quality shit. So they get, and it's not like if you were in another chat, people wouldn't care. Like if you were on the TRT show, I guarantee no one would ever say anything because they're not used to that shit. They're not used to that 11K like nerd shit that like only I can't even screen record Richard's videos because they like bug my phone out because they're like too. It looks more, better than real life. So it's like I think I was getting annoyed by it, not because it bothered me. It didn't really bother me ever. It, but, but everyone in the comments, it seemed to bother. So like but they've just already started to say like, like gl glory to God. They, literally, people were talking about God and your uh, mic sounding better. So <laughs> that is that is dumb dumb. Don't let me fool you. I'm a dumb dumb too. <laughs> um, so getting into other communities, I think that there's a tremendous, 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 tremendous opportunity <laughs> to go into other communities and 
be active in other communities. Have you ever heard of the book, How to, or Never Eat Alone? I think it was Never Eat Alone or How to Win Friends and Influence People. Well, they're both good books. But the idea is to, if you want to influence other people, you have to basically hear what they have to say and learn how they think about things so that you can use the way that they think to help lead them wherever it is that you want to influence them. And you also have to allow them to influence you in terms of understanding what they have to say, right? By, by me allowing somebody else to have my time so that they can influence me, whether it's reading the white paper of the MRI token, right? Or understanding call thou or the next project that I'll be doing tomorrow or whatever it is. It's giving them is that Is it Never Eat Alone by Keith Fariza? Yeah. That's yeah. what uh, Bullish said in the comments. Yes, that's a, it's a, that's a pretty good book. Uh, and then the How to Win Friends and Influence People is definitely a very good book that probably a lot of people... I've listened to a bunch of those books, but again, I have trouble reading anything that I'm not directly obsessed with in the moment. And I was obsessed with all those things at different times. So it's like, once you get past it, it's so hard to go back. But like, I'm also not a good reader and I don't really read. So... You know, but, I'm not but there's probably there's probably uh, a thousand different podcasts that you might like or audio. Oh, yeah. And like. I listen to it. I listen to it. <laughs> I promise you, I've listened to more audible audiobooks. And like I there was a time in my life, Sam, where I would not listen to an audiobook less than eight times. Wow. Before I moved on. Wow. I, I, uh, there was like three books a in a row, Sam. And the guy in the first book was like, you're supposed to read this shit 15 times. And I did. He said the best people, he's like, by definition, if you read this book 15 times, you'll be like a master of it. And I was like, fuck it. And I just listened to it every day at the gym until it was 15 times over. And I've known all of that information intimately until this moment. I've never forgotten any of it. But like, it's, it books, I forget. It is interesting, though, because I would, when I was studying for the CFA, uh, there's six textbooks. So I would read through literally from six? cover to cover. Per test, yes, per test. So That's there's the three tests. thing I've ever heard, bro. That's <laughs> sickening to even think about. I would rather die. It's like an eight-hour exam. Like you have to be there for like what, eight hours. What, do you have to be brainwashed to like get involved in all that? Like, how do you? What, how, do you <laughs> how do you? How do you incentivize yourself to like work that hard for like a cause that you don't necessarily? I mean, I guess you care, but are you just like thinking that that's what your that's your mission? Uh, well, uh, there's that part of it for some people is they think it's a mission for other people like me, they might just be nerds and they really enjoy that weird shit. Like, so you liked it. I, I would stop studying for certain periods of time and I, and I would go like at the time my ex-girlfriend and I would like, Hey, listen to this dope thing, whether it was taxes related or regulations or how to price something or how to value different things. And I was Max. really, I really, I really enjoyed that, that stuff. So, so getting into these other communities, like the, uh, the, the Look calls the community, right? It is very, very helpful to jump in there and you can connect with people, especially in that community. Cause there's so much similarity as in the, the hex community, right? Dude. There's so much. Similarity. Okay. So just for backstory, if Gunther didn't hear the show yesterday before he comes on, he's in the green room. We did a deep dive on cult yesterday. Okay, so we went into that, and I assume Gunther knows about these things because he's a nerd and he likes to learn. So, and he likes the meme, you know, he likes all the shit, I can tell. So, and I think he mentioned it on one of his tweets or something at some point. So, we're super excited to ask questions about that. Again, guys, me and Sam are nerds. We're not really drama. I'm getting a little, I understand it more now, but like, I'm not used to Twitter. I'm not used to Telegram. I'm really not used to any of this stuff. So, when it comes to like all, because in the comments, people are going, I mean, I read a hundred comments that were like, people are like going back and forth. But at the end of the day, guys, you have to understand, I don't know about any of that rich people shit, nor do I care. So I just want to talk about crypto. I like crypto. You know what I mean? I love crypto because I promise you, I don't have that much stake in the game right now. I'm 95% down on my bag and I'm happy as a clam. I mean, I'm happy as a clam as far as like, it's a fresh slate, guys. It's a fresh slate, you know? Like, it's a it's a bear market. I get my first chance. This is my chance now to be, like, successful moving forward, right? 
because I can't do it when it's pumping 1100%. Guys, hold on one second. He's, he's going to come back to his desk in a second, but Gunther is in the booth. Hey, hey looking, sh guys. looking sharp today, looking brother. Sharp, bro. I have to yeah. shower. <laughs> <laughs> decided to shower today. Yeah, decided to shower. After weeks of that shower so. How are you feeling today? I feel great. Good. So yeah. All this stuff on the internet and the Twitter that's going on, like, I don't really want to get into it because I personally don't know about any of it. Ooh. Apple nice. cider vinegar gummies. Nice work. Hey, but so, but, but I wanted to ask you a few questions if you didn't mind me getting into a bit of a different subject. Me and Sam were doing the cult research yesterday. I hate they to disappoint you. You don't know it. I, I just asked somebody like, hey, give me the value proposition in one tweet. Uh, no one was able to deliver a value Ooh. proposition that caught my attention. Oh, well, let, let's, can we talk about it a little then? Because yeah. I'm just learning I know nothing about it. So, <laughs> Well, let's let's talk about the game theory a little bit and jump around a little. Maybe someone else will jump on at some point. But Sam, I'm sure you have a bunch of questions about everything. Well, so if in like say uh, say in like a elevator pitch type style, right? You have a DAO that has a plethora of issues related to that, right? Where whether it's somebody who holds a big bag and then it's not really a DAO because one person just controls shit anyway, or um, the there's risk associated with the admin keys or uh, liquidity drying up. Like there's there's different issues that come up with uh, DAOs. Well, when I read through and and really dove into Cult, they have a mission to like increase decentralization, and it's basically a funding de uh, fund. It's a VC fund, so they they only fund fifteen point five ETH worth of cult to every project that they're going to fund and it is put forth by the top 50 accounts the top 50 accounts are not allowed to vote so they, they can't vote on if it goes through only other people in the system can vote that are not the top 50 and that's essentially what it is but they've taken care of all of, or at least they've tried to take care of all of the security issues right it's been audited it is public i saw somebody uh, constantine asked about it it is public uh, if you go to twitter you can probably find it um there's no admin keys the liquidity has been locked into the system for years for 265 years um the the contracts are locked so it's immutable you can't change them uh like can I can I all can this I stuff? Yes, 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 yes. Can yes. back off of that? Has anyone in the um there's a group, a telegram group that um of devs that go through and look at like pulse? Is that pulse police? Yeah, pulse police has I'm pulse gonna, police looked at it. Double back on them real quick. So in five minutes you'll have the answer to that. Yeah, if you can if you can have pulse police look at that and let those guys look at the code. They, I think they've I've seen it in the problem. chat, so they've definitely already looked at it. Let me see okay. what their consensus is here. Okay. So we'll do that live real quick. I'm, I'm, I'm commenting with them right now. And um, so it sounds like it's some type of venture, if I understand correctly, some type of venture capital fund that allocates a certain amount of ETH to certain projects that are voted into uh, like to where the money goes. And then um, I don't really understand what that means. Liquidity locked for 265 years. That, that seems very like, what does that even mean? So you know how people could pull liquidity and so that nobody can get out of something, right? You, yeah. can, you pull all the liquidity out of something. Yeah. Well, the liquidity is stuck there. So it's all locked in. This, so, and they're like, so this is, I'm unless I'm describing it incorrectly and somebody who has better grasp of this, please fucking correct me. Yeah. But it's just locked it in to say Uniswap, I would assume, or wherever it is. So that the yeah, liquidity- I'm like a loan shark. So I got to like adjust this. <laughs> yeah, you're the right. Wall Street. Right. I'm not the Wall Street guys. <laughs> and, and so it's just lot. It's just lot. Like so you can't. You can't. You can't pull that out there. You can't yeah. pull that out of there. So yeah. I don't know. Very interesting. The mission increasing uh, decentralization. Like I love that. And you read through their manifesto, and it's like covering all the shit related to censorship, talking about stuff related to big pharma. Like the person or persons who River wrote their manifesto white paper thing, 
was like clearly paying attention to the hot points of, of like society right now. And it was like, wow, this is interesting. And it's all like the, the, I want, I don't want the project to have like admin keys. There's no admin keys to the project. So you're like, how does shit get funded? It's all on the proposal. You put in the proposal, like where the money's going. And, and in order to submit a proposal, you have to have the project has to be audited. It has to have all the tokenomics presented uh, and like two or three other pieces to it. And then the ETH address or whatever address the money is going to be going to. And then it's it's like done. And you're like, wow, this is awesome. Like not necessarily that I'm like, think I think that it could do really well. It's also got a crazy like burn, uh, like the amount of how the actual tokenomics work. There's gonna, a lot of it is going to be burned. Yeah, I don't own any of Cult, by the way, guys. So I'm not, yes. the, reason I'm, the reason I'm talking about it is strictly because yeah. I have been looking. We, we, all, we all own zero Cult. And I'm not, I'm just being honest. Kind of the, like, the, and if I own some, I wouldn't even be. <laughs> I'm, I'm promise you guys, if I own some Cult, I will tell you right away and I could give a rat shit. Buy it. No, I'm not going to buy right. it. I'm just saying in general, like as an ethos, like I could, you know, I have to be able to be a free as a human being too. Like a lot of the Hex community is a little bit like, oh my God, I get scared. But it's like my stake in Hex is not as large as I wish it was. God damn it. But, <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean? But again, I'm just learning. I do a show every single day. So this is basically me just researching and whatever I get my hands on, whatever Sam gets our hands on. But when Pulse Chain comes out, guys, every single day you could pretty much guarantee from me and there's going to be a 24 hour pulse chain launch live stream anyone can come on get if you need to leave a message or something or if you think there's an important message that the people in the community should hear if you think there's like a, something going on that is important to maybe help people with a scam or whatever is going on at the time I'm going to be live for 24 hours straight and maybe it'll all just be a big party where we all go to the moon. You never know. Who knows? It'll be fun. Justin says that uh, it will be, it will be fun. Uh, Justin says that it already had a, a 200 X pump. Uh, I mean, yeah. yeah. Uh, That's so a lot. I think you guys should read the comments. Uh, there was two really good comments, one by Motley investor and another one uh, by Hedron God. So I think you guys should go back and look at those. I, I know which one you're talking about. I'm pulling it up right now. Yeah, there you go. Sam, why wouldn't you just make the investment yourself instead of suffering the tax and being at the mercy of what the masses choose to invest in? That's a good point, too. For, yeah, why, for, why for let what? somebody else vote for you? Why not just choose the assets that you think? Yeah, like those for? assets that they were voting for. That. And like, you can yeah. know the assets that. Yeah, you could, you could. You could. Yeah. So that's interesting, though. I mean, that's important to know. Hey, let's like imagine. Imagine if um, if we asked. Imagine if we went on Twitter, and we created. Um, this is also a very good point. Hedron God is bringing up. Thanks for uh, thanks for the comment, Hedron God. Um, uh, liquidity locking is very bad. Perfect example is Wise Token. I don't, don't want to Wise in. Token. Don't put that. In. <laughs> Sam, come on with the flossing of your teeth. <laughs> yeah, I had some I had some steak with my eggs in it. And I got yeah. that shit in my teeth. All right, all right, all right. It's, all, it's all good, bro. You're promoting like clean teeth and dental hygiene. That's good. That's all right. Hey, <laughs> can we ask you some questions? Like, I want we can get into hex a little bit if you don't mind. Yeah. Or, yeah. Because I'm. This is my first bear market of any sorts. Oof. And I know, trust me, this is great for me. I love it. I, I love it. I've never taken any money out of crypto personally, not mm. because I shouldn't have. Maybe I should have. But God knows. But um, you know what I mean? Like, I'm excited for this opportunity because I'm a workhorse and I love working. So a bear market's a perfect time for me to separate myself from other people. Yeah. You know, like, I can work harder and yeah. do better. So coming into this, I don't, I'm not the kind of guy that's like, how low can it go? Like, but if you look at a price chart, right, I'm kind of just going by what I see. You look at a price chart, you've seen ETH have similar kind of like falls at a similar time. How low do you think it can go before it actually hurts the stability overall of the project? And I'm just curious. It's a, it's a fair question. Um, it all, see, honestly, it all comes down to what, what the product is, right? So for example, if you take a price chart like Luna, you might be like, oh, I bought the bottom, then it drops 99%. You're like, oh, I bought the bottom, then it dropped 99%. Oh, I bought the bottom, then it dropped 99%. Oh, bottom, it dropped 
And actually it could go all the way down to like point zero 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 one. I don't think it go below that. Is it 16 like, zeros? Uh, like 18 zeros or something. I don't know. I, you, you guys, you dev, the devs will have to fact check me on that. Please uh, fact check me. But it's it could go really, really fucking low. It means every every bottom you thought, it just went down 99% from that point. Uh, so, yeah, you don't want to buy that because some things actually go to zero. We watched it in real time. However, when you have a product like Hex, uh, <laughs> it's a beautiful product. It's it like when I, I don't need to look at the price chart uh, and, and like the price chart for me at this point does not determine its success in the future. It, it, it really doesn't. I just closed the price chart. I don't even need to look at it. A little bit painful to look at it these days, but, <laughs> but, but, but here's the point though. Here's the point. So it, we don't, no one knows, no one can, no one has a crystal ball. No one can predict what a market will do. No one can predict the exact bottom and be consistent every time. You might get some calls right, but you also get some calls wrong. No one is a fuck, like no one knows the future, right? So having said that, if you have a good product like Hex that we all love and trust and believe in and are willing to go on Twitter and fucking fight for it instead of being a pussy and a coward, we're actually willing to fight for the asset that we love and care about. Sorry, I had to say that. I will. I do too. In my in my personal life, in my personal life, I do too. I was defending Hex. My, you know, last night. Last night, yeah. My dad just and my dad's a nice guy. He doesn't know anything about crypto, of course. But he was telling me he's like guys like Richard Hart, and I said, "You again?" I just told him. I was like, "You don't understand intimately this situation." So how could you ever comment on it, right? Yeah. That's basically what it always boils down to. If you haven't looked at the patterns that the OA has done and you don't understand the concepts of the OA, you would struggle to understand the concept of hex altogether in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so I mean, I mean if you think about it hex hex is is working as intended. If you if you really understand the numbers and have really audited uh like the OA and you can kind of separate the OA from like user owned uh, uh, wallets. And I won't get into the details of OA, but if you really understand that, then it isn't just 10% of hex estate, right? That's not a, that's not a, that's not a, that's not a reliable number you should be looking at. Honestly, of all hex owned by users, 75% is state, 25% is liquid. It's about, I don't last time I looked like maybe 17.7 .7 billion tokens liquid. So people are using hex as intended. People have made a lot of money from Hex. A lot of people obviously are cashing out. It's fine. People sell. This is fine. This is like nobody just holds assets forever, right? Um, but I, I think, I think having going back to what I was saying about the bottom, since you cannot predict a bottom, when an asset drops ninety three percent, you should, uh, and it's a good asset with perfect product market fit. Um, and it has reliable, like trusted code and billions of dollars are locked for an average of over six years, you should probably hit the buy button. Like you should probably be dollar cost averaging in. Now, the only thing I will say to that is that, okay, it drops 93%. Can it go lower? Sure. Of course it can. You, no one knows. I mean, even Amazon dropped 95% and then recovered quite well. Ethereum dropped 95 percent and, and recovered quite well bitcoin had many crashes and recovered quite well it's and there's always been like these narratives of like oh it's dead it's dead it's dead but then it recovers right so i think you should i think if you love hex and you have not built a staking ladder or or let me put it this way well yeah if you love hex and you haven't built a staking ladder or even if you don't own hex and you haven't built a staking ladder i think you should do that I really do. I think this is a great opportunity for you. The price has come down. Um, it's crashed down from 51.3 cents. I didn't look at the price recently, but it's probably, what's it at? Oh, okay. Uh, what's the price? The yeah. price was like six cents this morning or five hey, and a half cents. So we, what I, I was highlighting here, what Bullish is highlighting here is that the Pulse Chain test net on the right side here has uh, popped up. The numbers there for the pulse chain test net, which is an update, which is cool. <laughs> yeah, so but right now nice the price is at a, a zero five four seven <laughs> per hex. Oh, okay, perfect, 
Perfect. Yep. Thanks. Yeah, so 547 one t share is uh $1200 and 1242 right now. Okay. Yeah, it's cheap. <laughs> so cheap. Oh my god. Yeah. So I mean, if you think about it, if you're buying hex at 5 cents and it goes back up to 50 cents and it will over time, you've already 10 extra money. So that already is amazing, right? Um the only thing I would caution you is is that when buying hex after this major market crash, you need to understand that hex has painted a multi-year bear market pattern. And I know a lot of people don't like thinking about that or talking about that. And they're like, oh, you're fighting our bags. You're fighting our bags. Cut the bullshit, guys. I'm 100% staked. Average stake length at 11 years. I'm giving you the truth. Thank you. Old, Thank harsh you so truth, which you deserve. It could take, it, it's not, this is no guarantee, but I'm just saying in a worst case scenario, it could take two or three years to get back up to 51 cents. You need to understand that. Um, so and that's not the end of the world. No, you just bought, you just bought, you basically just buy in, in the entire accumulation zone. If you haven't built a hex staking ladder and you don't have a solid position or you want to increase your position, you're perfect. Here's your opportunity. You were, everyone was begging for the dip. Please crash. Please crash. Why does hex only go up? It only goes up. I only see face melting green candles. Well, Hey, the market gave you what you asked for. All you, all you guys whining for it and hex trading, the market gave you exactly what you wanted. And now when it's there, you don't want it anymore. This is market psychology. You want to throw it away like trash. And But there are guys that can break through that. And those are the guys that really study and have good mental health habits, right? Because if you real, me and Sam are giddy like schoolgirls every morning because we have an opportunity to change our lives now, which before I had an opportunity to change my life maybe a little bit, but at 51 cents, I, as a user and where the market was at was a little priced out at the moment, like, yeah. you know, and just for the value prop at that very moment, you know what I mean? So these opportunities to me, I wasted a lot of money buying at 27 cents at 20 cents, but I staked all that uh, most of it. So it doesn't make a difference, but that's not the point. The point is in five to 10 years, it's going there's a reason the staking feature is a six and a half year i mean Go, yeah. gunther what do you, what do you th so you said uh that your the perception is that it's a, a potentially long-term bear market right and when you what do you think about layering that on top of a macro recession or potentially like depression period of time where hyperinflation just continues or well we're not at the quote definite traditional definition yeah. of hyperinflation but i mean 10 percent still 10 fucking percent and then you're putting this on top of the first time ever in crypto going through a recession right because we haven't had a recession since yeah. 2009 when bitcoin came out so how do you think about that layering this on top here because i completely agree like i could easily be 24 months 48 months of a period of time where it's just a kind of like sideways and maybe some spikes on shit, but yeah. And it may, and it also may recover sooner. Um, to answer your question, that's a little bit outside the scope of my knowledge. I'd rather not try to make that connection because I'm just not really qualified to do that. Um, but I will say this, that um, usually with like, and just studying crypto markets, um, usually these assets like this, after they've just done a mega bull run where they literally went up like 10,000 times in value, like hex, um, they, they 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 crash and then there's like a rounded bottom that forms and so what what's happening is, is the price is looking for a bottom it it's like finds a bottom it's like a local bottom and it's like okay can we find support here then it breaks then it like looks for another bottom okay can we find support here then it breaks and, and that's why it's important to breaks. look at the deck screener and see like how many people are actually buying right like that's what i look for when i look in the morning and i'm doing my research like i like to see i know there's big accounts that sell period it's the end of story i don't need to really look into that because what am i going to do they're going to sell probably if they want to but i look at how many users are buying right like more green buys but maybe i'm maybe that number isn't sufficient enough no that that metric is not the best because it, it's not the quantity of people it's the dollar value that's being injected if if you're removing but how many you know, in terms of adoption like how many people is enough like at, at four hundred thousand users if nobody big comes in would it change yeah. much yeah well so um, more well uh let me just let me just let me kind of like finish this, this yeah. thought. Right? So if you have like $50 million, I'm just throwing out an arbitrary number. Mm -hmm. If $50 million is leaving and $25 million is coming in, price goes down because sell pressure yeah. greater than buy True. pressure. So just basic fucking math. Right. 
Right. So it's, it's again, the point is that it's not about the numbers. However, what you're, I think that you are making a good point. What's happening is as the larger bags are selling their positions and redistributing, and we're talking about the guys that are selling and not buying back. There are some that are selling like huge stacks and then buying back uh, and then buying back with like huge stacks and their limit orders are being filled because they're trying to like basically just build a stronger position. Yeah. Uh, but we're talking about the guys that are selling and just bouncing. Mm -hmm. These guys are actually distributing their bags to a bunch of like smaller bags. And what's great about that is that these guys now want to hold for like return on investment because they're just buying. So they want to hold for that 10 X or hundred X or a thousand X. So, but this distribution, this redistribution process does not happen overnight. Unfortunately, everyone looks at the chart. Like they just wanted to just please fucking pump, please paint some green candles like Bob Ross, please no more pain, no more misery, no more sorrow. And the chart's like, nope, fuck you. We, you haven't even experienced pain yet. Welcome to Max Pain. Welcome to the town of Max Pain, where we're going to just like brutally uh, violate you in places that you don't want to be touched, basically. All right. So, all right. A little bit inappropriate. But, <laughs> right, so, appropriate, inappropriate. Yeah. So here's, here's, the, here's, the, here's the thing. So you basically form like once it finds its bottom and there's been no clear indication that it has truly found its bottom, there's no, been, there's no confirmation of that yet. Then what it does is it sort of just has a rounded like U cup type of bottom, right? But then what happens is as the price recovers and starts to go back up, every broken support is now a psychological resistance for the price. This is just basic like ta basic psychology if, if and so that's why all the people please break 25 cents please break 10 cents pre please break five cents please break one cent please go to like a tenth of one cent please go all the way back you guys don't understand it's setting that the floor. that yet yeah, yeah, now you have resistance at every single price floor that you just broke and that resistance is real so that means when the price bounces back up there's a likelihood that it get that it crashes again and then bounces back up, crashes again. Now it just makes it a little bit less probable that the amount of people would want to, you know what I mean? Like it just seems like it makes it less probable the more floors that you break through because every time you break through a floor, there's people that have bought in at that position, right? Like in are in at that position, and if it yeah. goes, they'll trade if it fluctuates, right? Yeah, you have well, you have you have obviously volatility due to traders. You've got. Um, people cashing out and not coming back in, but then you also have buyers, people market buying, people doing limit orders, people doing LP positions. You have all kinds of things happening all at the same time. Um, but the, the point of this is, is that eventually the price does recover and basically forms like a cup and handle. The price returns to 51.3 cents. There's some type of retracement, uh, but not usually not, it doesn't last that long because everyone thinks, oh, it's gonna crash again. But it's usually just like a hand, like a handle that that's somewhat short lived, and then the price returns to fifty one point three cents, battles that resistance, and eventually breaks it and goes on like a bull run and, and forms a new all time high. You could actually see. Um, I'll read it. Okay. Um, so Motley Investor said, "I push back a little on that. When these large bags sell their position, they're done. More buyers, even if less than monetary value, it will slowly grind upward over time. Time." takes time to redistribute yeah i think that we're, we're we're basically just all getting to the point where it's going this is could take time that's yeah that's the only issue now we don't yeah. no, no one has a crystal ball so we don't know how long so for example the peak was was september of 2021 maybe it takes a year maybe it takes two years maybe it takes three years i don't i think anything beyond three three years is just uh delusional i, I think three years is like an extreme case it could just be Very. You know, 12 months, it could be 20, you know, 18 months, 24 months. We don't know. I'm just saying I'd rather set proper expectations for people. Like, hey, if you're buying now, build a, build a staking ladder that extends out. Start paying your future self. Start at 15 years and work your way back. You know, annual stakes every six months, quarterly. That's what months. Hex is for. I felt like that's what I love Hex for. You know what I mean? Like, I like Hex for my long-term thinking brain, but like, I also am learning more about my short-term thinking brain and I'm somebody who has a lot of discipline. So when you're talking about me and potentially other people, they're not, it's not always exactly the same because I generally 
do things in a kind of proper way if I'm going to do them. So again, when we're talking about people that sell positions and stuff, it's generally bad if you don't know what you're doing, if you're selling your shit. Like if you have no idea what you're doing, like when you're selling, you're probably making a mistake. But if you know exactly what you're doing in the macro looks really bad, I mean, come on, guys. They're just human beings here. Like, it's just people are going to sell their position for altcoins, like, and they're going to move into Bitcoin. And we look at it every day. We look up the biggest deck screener and we just see where they put their money. We don't look at who it is. We just, where are they putting their money? USDC and Bitcoin. What do you, what do you think? Because assuming that there's a, you know, a pulse tree launch in, in June or July or something, um, what do you think happens around that time? Right. Because I think that it is possible that so say there's a, a date that is like confirmed, ready to go kind of thing mm -hmm. uh, that is not like going to be pushed back again. And uh, at that time, right the, the people who are understanding Pulse are going to probably want to put some of their money into something that they think is going to double real quick because parity with hacks is going to happen faster than anything else. Uh, in my opinion, right? So what do you think happens during that time when the, the lead up to the launch and then, uh, right, then you're going to have two different networks happen. You're going to have, you know, on both sides. I think, well, first, I think in terms of the timing of the launch, like obviously no one knows when the, when the, when Pulse Chain will launch, uh, except for Richard and the devs. Even then, they don't know. They're still working on issues. And so they, they, they don't even want to give any more estimates because no one knows until, they, until it's ready to go, right? Um, so... I would just say this, set proper expectations for the launch of Pulse Chain. Maybe it launches at the end of the year. No one knows. Like I, that, my mindset is not launch in summer. I'll be I'll be really, really happy if it launches in summer. I'd be uh, But it really doesn't matter to me either. Yeah. Like I can get that doesn't it'd, matter. It'd be, yeah, it'd be great if it launched like soon. That'd be awesome. If not, no big deal. It launches at the end of the year, maybe whatever. But I would just say this. Um, um yeah, so I sort of lost the train, my train. So the, what happened? What happens with the hex, or what happens during? The, oh yeah, the lead up. So does does hex go on a major bull run when the highest of stakes documentary comes out, or when Pulse Chain launches? I just mentioned two different like things, two different events. I don't think so. I, I don't think so. I think actually, when Pulse Chain launches, there's more sell pressure on hex because everyone just got double their coins. And so if they have double the liquid bags, now they have more ammo to actually dump. I don't, so I don't, for me, it doesn't, it doesn't translate to buying power. It translates to more selling. Uh, what do you think about, about the Pulse Chain? chain? I, on it. I agree. What do you think about like Pulse Chain as an individual unit um, and Pulse X because it gives people more ammo? Yes, but the asset is different, potentially more short-term volatility to the upside i mean i don't want to say for, for sure because i wouldn't know but i'm it could right like there could be guys that are waiting to get into pulse i would think pulse more than pulse x just because. i think yeah I'm, I'm thinking that if anything has a bull run in my like no crystal ball but i'm just just spec pure speculation guys like i don't know i don't know just like you but I think, uh, and if you if you make decisions based on my speculation and then judge me for it, that's on you. Stupid. That. That's, that's your wallet, your choices. Um, but I, I I just think that it would be more likely that something like Pulse would actually go up because people, a lot of people didn't get into Pulse. They got into Pulse X or they put more money into Pulse X. Maybe they want to even out their bags or maybe they want to buy, swap. They will. They will. They will yeah. I mean, I mean, we we already we sort of already know. Now you might also have people. People just love hex. They only care about hex. They don't care. They might have pulse and pulse X bags, so they might dump their bags of pulse and pulse X into hex. For example, this is why we don't know. Um, you could have where just if pulse and pulse X just start trading at just crazy prices relative to like the early sacrificers that love hex, they might be like, I just twenty five X my pulse X bag. I'm going to dump all of that into Hex because that's a solid play because Hex has crashed this much. And I don't care about these mega dumpers and they'll just be building their position while it's bottoming out. So I, so there's so much that could, that could happen. We just don't. Yeah. Know. And I, oh God, I'm stressed out. Like as somebody who's new ish <clears throat> to like, not crypto, but like really being involved on the computer, learning this stuff properly, having my security, my separate computers, everything. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of nervous, man. <laughs> like I'm nervous about 
pulse coming out. I don't want, I just want peace. <laughs> you know what I mean? I want peace and I want uh, a little bit of security. And you know me, Sam, I have a wallet I have to race for. I have a, you know, like all this crap. I got to race for a wallet that has a most or a good portion of my pulse sacrifice on it. So I'm going to be thinking about that the whole time, which is going to be stressful. But I mean, I've practiced. Uh, why don't you Why don't you ask Gunther or anybody else in the chat if there's a resource you could? I've already with? asked everyone everything. I know what I can and cannot do on that, and I it, I brought it up so often at the time that I kind of worked through it. So I I came to the speculation that yeah, there are some ways to get out, but like at the end of the day, if this dude has a bot, I'm gonna lose to him anyway. So I'm if I'm the first one there, I'll probably get it. It's just like. If I could, there's a bot thing that people are talking about, but again, I'm just not going to go into it. I'm just going to like have a lot of fiat on the sidelines too, and just take the L or get the money off the account. We'll see, I guess. Hey, Motley makes a good point here about Pulse Chain. Um, then Pulse X, your money is best spent on what's dipping. Don't pay a premium. And that's a really good point. If you have an asset that's crashing 80 or 90%, start reallocating some of your, one, another of your assets into that thing. This is what's beautiful about Pulse Chain because, like a lot of us, we've got Pulse coming, we got Pulse X, we got Hex, we got Pulse Doge. Um, so we have like like we have different assets that we can play around with. Um, and this is the beauty of it: look for opportunities to buy dips, right? And maybe uh, maybe you cash out a percentage of other things. It doesn't mean you just dump your you don't just go blitz dump your whole full stack. Um, this is not like a hedron scenario, right? This is this is like completely different, right? Like you don't take you don't take fucking eight billion uh, pulse X and just blitz dump it and just instantly throw it into something. Like I don't think that's smart. But maybe maybe with any of these assets, if something has done a bull run and something else is dipping, well, maybe you take ten percent off the table of that one and put it into something else. It's an arbitrary number. You choose the percentage. Your wallets, your choices, your coins, your keys, your decisions. You know. And no, because if you and to to give people like kind of the idea of what he's talking about right there, if you have three things that you believe in relatively equally, right? You you believe in acts, you believe in pulse acts, and you believe in pulse all with some conviction. And even if they're all increasing in their bag, but say one is a, you know a hundred x over a short period of time, and the other is at a ten x, and, and one is at a five x, the one that's gone up by over hundred x, selling potentially uh, ten percent of that bag, can get you into the other one that's only gone up five x. Or if under the best case scenario, maybe the one somebody is dumping completely, and so one's up hundred x, and the other one's down fifty percent. Right, because then you take ten percent off the bat, and you just increase the quantity of tokens that you have overall. Especially if you play that strategy out over the course of say several months, and then you do it over a couple of years, uh, assuming that things will be around in a couple of years, right? Then you're going to really, really be able to increase your bag over time. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I like it. Also, you got to think of you got to think about um, one thing that I look at in in my uh, personal decisions that I make. Um, <laughs> nice. <laughs> hey, a great guy. I first met him in hex trading. He's on, he's on Twitter. Too. I love Bob. I to follow the him. guy. You know, Bob. Just for one quick tidbit, Bob was the one of the first guys to watch the show, and then he actually started the Telegram for the show just because he wanted he liked the show and he wanted to get involved. So all yeah. the the entire Telegram is just up me and Bob and basically chopping up. And he helps me with a lot of behind the scenes stuff when I have real questions. He helps me with a lot. Good guy. Nice. A legend. Yeah. yeah. So, um, um, one, one thing that I, one thing, what, what I do is, uh, like when I'm analyzing some of the assets that I hold in my own personal portfolio, um, I look at, uh, which assets are, which assets have low liquidity and which assets have high liquidity, which assets are more mature, which ones are newer, right? So for let's just let's just give an example just so, just so the audience can understand it's not so vague. If you have when, let, or let's ask some questions first. When is the best time to buy an asset? The best time to buy an asset is basically at its inception. Not necessarily you don't just yolo day one, you dollar cost dollar cost average into that asset, but the best time to get into a, an asset with perfect product market fit that you think will have demand and you like is when it is at the inception of that asset. Because that is essentially the, the point of maximum financial opportunity. Actually, the real point of maximum financial opportunity 
is once that new asset has like crashed and then it never goes back to that point, that is the ultimate point of maximum financial opportunity. So for like Hex, for example, it was 0.00005655, four leading zeros. That was the best, the very best possible time to buy. I, I think at that time I, I bought like $276 worth. It was like, it was like two ETH across like two separate days in the adoption amplifier and then stake both for 10 years. They're doing really well. I'm fucking killing it with those. <laughs> literally, I literally captured the all time low for Hex, which means the lowest price point for T-shares and it captured big payday interest and it staked for 10 years and multiplied T-shares by 3X and it gets all that appreciation like for 10 consecutive years. It's good. Those are, those are literally, literally. What, 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 what does that even come out to me? So, so what was it? 265 bucks. I'm sorry to get you off. Uh, it was $276. Um, at later, later on the stream, I'll, if I got time, I'll look it up uh, on stakehex.today and I'll, I'll give you the value of it. But uh, okay, anyway, okay. sorry. Go ahead. Um, so my point is, is that you want to look at brand new assets that have perfect product market fit. You want a dollar cost average in at the inception of that thing. And you want it to have low liquidity because when, when the liquidity is low, then it, it, it doesn't take that much economic mass or energy or real dollars to move that price technically in both directions, up and down. Then there's like a, a lot of volatility due to trading, but all of that in the end just moves the price up. And so if, it, if, if the asset is actually bullish and there's dem increasing demand for it, then you could really paint these fat green beautiful candles like we saw in the early days of Hex. Um, so my point, my point is this, you need to look at some of your assets and you need to think how much economic mass and energy is required for me to push the value of that asset up 10x, 100x, 1000x, 10,000x. And if one requires significantly so much more money to push that price up and one requires a lot less, but you but you're bullish on that one, then I think it's smart to maybe allocate some of your money into the other thing. It, it and, and everyone just chooses whatever percentage. Maybe they're comfortable with one percent, for example, right, or ten percent or whatever. And like people just are free to make their own choices. So I think people really need to like think about these things. And here's the beauty of this. Let's say, for example, you hold a bunch of assets. We'll call them um, X. We'll call them A, B, C, D, and E, right? Um, if you make money, if you put your money into, let's say, asset uh, B, and B meets all the requirements that I was just talking about, you could accelerate the, the, the value and the wealth of your own individual portfolio way faster than if you just kept all your money in, in asset A, because a, asset A is already done really, really well. So, um, and then what happens is because you love asset A so much in the future, maybe two years down the road when you've made mad gains in asset B, then why not just take asset B, take a 10% off the table or 20% or whatever you, or 1%, whatever you want and reallocate that into asset A. Uh, I think that's kind of smart because guess what? A lot of us are in this position with, where we just see these guys just mega dumping on us and hex. And we're frustrated because we can't do anything. We might be multimillionaires on paper, but that's meaningless if we don't have if we don't have a hundred million dollars liquid ready to inject to push the price up. And even a lot of sharks are running into this issue. People that want to protect and defend the price and inject capital, but yet they don't want their capital be to be used as exit liquidity, and their money is not being treated well. But they also they don't have that much capital to inject. They, this is bear market. This is rough times. Um, so. You need to think about ways to, to earn that economic mass and energy in a snowball avalanche type of effect in another asset. Maybe you're, you have a patient game plan, especially if, if Hex takes, you know, one or two or three years to, to, to actually fully recover. Then you step back into Hex and maybe now you have significant capital to inject into your favorite asset and you can create another, another beautiful like staking ladder or add to your own staking ladder, right? So people, people need to think about this. The uh, one problem they make, this is, let me tell you right now, straight up, this is a fatal flaw. If you don't understand this, you suck at mathematics. This is a fatal flaw. If you are tribalistic and maximalist and you only, only care about one asset, you're actually 
you actually will make poor financial decisions because all of your money will only ever be tied up in that asset. And you won't even be able to inject real capital into that asset because you just basically have everything tied up, especially if that asset is crashing. So you guys really, really need to think about this. If you love these assets, you need to think about other ways to grow the money and other environments by being careful and, and making well, really like well thought out plays. And then you have some capital to inject in these things. I'm going to see if I can pull up those stakes. I, I have to run, by the way, in about. You're good, man. No, no, that that's actually perfect because I got to run in about 15 minutes as well. So, OK, that, yeah, I got to I got to leave uh, pretty much in a couple minutes. So let me just see if I can. Find we're it. keeping the show short now. It, it, so we're going like an hour, 15, hour, 30 every time. So we're, okay, about, perfect. we're about, uh, at that time anyway. Yeah. Perfect. I'll pull this up. Uh, and you Trying to make it sustainable. Uh, PVM mentioned, so you're saying sell hex for other stuff. No, he's not saying any of that. You you got to think for yourself, and that's what he's encouraging you to do, in my opinion. Uh, is, yeah, is Sam, while he pulls yourself. that up, can you can you comment on his tribalism point? Because I know you have similar beliefs, and I'm more I'm I went from Bitcoin to hex, right? Like that's my only thing. So I've only really known hex and what Pulse Chain is going to be, and now I'm starting to learn about other stuff. But I want everyone to know, like, I'm an open-minded dude in general. I don't, I just do what's the best for me every time. <laughs> so, you know, that's what I try to do at least. So I, th I think from, uh, if somebody's just getting started and I think it's better to go all in on one thing, because as you transition from, if you try to do, if you are working a, a W-2 job or on your own business, you have a excess cash flow of a thousand bucks a month to DCA into something. I think it makes more sense to DCA into one thing so that that thing could become more meaningful to you over time. Now, with that being said, as you grow your bag and as you have more capital to play with, I think it makes far more sense to look at other things as, as you move around uh, because it just might be fun to do those types of things as well. And you have a different, you have a different objective. Your point of view changes as you go through things. But a lot of the times, like when you're, when you're small, if you don't have a lot of money in something, it makes more sense to me to just go all in on one thing as you continue to build, as you continue to grow. Now you're now your business is generating, you know, 60 grand a month of excess cash flow to put in something. Maybe it makes sense to continue that. Maybe your life situation has changed and it makes more sense to do three or four or five or six different things. Right. And I think yeah, that's it where they change. It definitely changes as you as get a, you just strategies, right? Like if you never need a dollar in real life, your strategy is going to be way, way different. Like if you just have a business that just happens to bring in a, a slow to revenue and you're just like, I don't necessarily need much capital in my real life as far as whatever I put aside to inject into crypto. It's like your strategy is going to be a lot different. But what do a lot of people do in crypto? They try to somehow stop working, which is fine. Do whatever the hell you want. But money flow is very important guys like in people don't people i have to focus on this a lot in my own life i'm making a transition right now i have to start learning how to make more money obviously every man does it's normal like and i'm doing that i mean come on maybe we're, we're working over here so you, go ahead i was gonna say gunther found those stakes he was talking about. yeah go ahead well, yeah the 276 dollar investment is now worth eight hundred and twenty thousand dollars and seven eight twenty thousand seven seventy one jesus um, that's uh, that, and that's present value after getting wrecked. Jesus, I wrecked. I thought you were gonna say that was the top. So, no, no. So, so imagine like 10x from now. That's like 8.2 million dollars from a 276 dollar investment. Now, this this should highlight a point. Very few people actually caught the all time low, and if they did, they they put any barely any money in. I put 276 dollars at the all time low, but put 8 thousand dollars on on day one. So I, I basically lost hundreds of millions of dollars from that mistake. So uh, anyway, so that's that. Um, uh, yeah. So anyway. the opportunity no, thank you for pulling it up. I appreciate that because yeah. it puts a lot of things into perspective. Like, yeah, it just shows you like the craziness. Like, oh, Seth, that, that, that highlights the point, actually. The point of Matt, like when you capture the point of maximum financial opportunity, and that's a 10 year stake, imagine like going Fuck. forward. And so that, that highlights the point with other new assets that you get into. You want to actually try to, to snipe as close as you can to the point of maximum financial opportunity. And a lot of times it's not clear at that time that that, that is the point. Um, but I will also say this. Notice how I said when I talked about uh, swapping assets. Notice I said if you have assets A, B, C, D, and E, 
I use variables because people hold different assets. Maybe you hold uh, Bitcoin, maybe you hold Ethereum, maybe you hold Hex, maybe you hold uh, dog coins, right? <laughs> maybe you hold Postdoge or whatever. People have different assets and people are free to swap any assets as they deem fit because that's their keys, their wallet, their, their money, their choices, their decisions, their responsibility. So I'm not telling anyone, hey, swap this for this. I, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying you make decisions that you think are in the best interest of your wallet, whatever that might be, whatever assets. Maybe you, maybe I've seen some wallets recently where they hold, um, I want to see if I can find the transactions because I'll post it on Twitter, but they hold other different uh, meme coins. And they, um, I think they started swapping those meme coins uh, for like Polsto, for example. So I think, yeah, in that, that instance, like that's a solid, I think that's a solid play. Yes. Yes. No, a hundred percent. Like I completely agree. Do what's, do what's in your best interest, period. If you're not sure what that is, then you should probably invest in yourself in your own education and shit. People will just, people will just basically, people will just give you shit and, and really put you down and judge you. If they're like, Oh, see, you just went and swapped like hex for pole stoge. You're a terrible sinner. It's like, come on guys, people have all kinds of assets in their wallets. What if, what if you, what if you held that same mentality in the early days of hex and you're like, and you were a Bitcoiner and you're like, see, you guys suck. You guys just swapped your Bitcoin for hex. You guys are terrible people. You guys don't believe in the asset. Well, I'm gonna tell you something. A lot of people that's, that swapped their Bitcoin for hex in the early days made a lot of money in hex. And some of those guys put it back into Bitcoin because that's what they love. And so, you know what I mean? So like, you just, even highlight it. He highlights highlight. it all the time. He says, if you love Bitcoin, he says this word for word, if you love Bitcoin, then you could buy Hex and you can get a lot more Bitcoin in the future. What, what you've gone through was just saying. Yeah. Yeah. I disagree with Constantine. This stream is the you in front. Yeah, he was, I think he was saying because you were like saying the best time is day one, but then like the dip after day one, we oh, weren't okay. highlighting at the time. So he oh, said, okay. But I know what you were saying. You were saying yeah. Yeah. yeah, dollar yeah. cost average. Dollar cost yeah. average. Yeah. You can I, never get the exception of that. Like, like over 30 days or 60 days. Like that's pretty good, I think. And are there coins that is it fair to say there are coins that didn't have an initial 90% mm -hmm. dip too? Like you can't none of us can predict the future. But I yeah. would say most <laughs> of the time they probably do, but yeah. Most, yeah, even 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 Hedron, even though it did 13x in nine days, it still crashed first because one of the top, one of the larger sharks mega dumped a trillion hedron which gave you the crash like it gave you the opportunity to buy it yes. motley says another cool perspective richard bought btc at 30 dollars. that's only a 2000x what hex has done over two years is special guys even if it is a 10,000x from the low to the high exactly i like people yeah. look past the facts very quickly yeah like remember when one cent hex was impossible that was like yesterday yeah. So just remember, guys, everyone is dumb. Nobody's thinking. You got to think critically, very critically, like very critically, like not just like, oh, my buddy said this and now I'm going to do this. No, that's yeah. not critical thinking. You have to research multiple sources. You have to ask the most trusted people in your life. And then you have to interact with all that information. OK, and you have to look at the facts. There's stat size. Hex has the best stat sites in crypto. So you can look up every stat that you would like. I mean, whatever. You know what I mean? Guys, it's been a good show. Do you have any closing thoughts for the guys and gals? Gunther. Oh, okay. That was directed toward me, towards me. Sorry. <laughs> um, I'll let you go first. I'm not going <laughs> to. Um, closing thoughts. Hmm. Um, I know, and this is a little bit of a side topic, but I'll, I'll be I'll be just very concise with it. I know some people like are really upset that I'm like saying some of the things I'm saying on Twitter, and uh, I, I fully understand and respect those positions. Like I, I'm not trying to like stir up drama or like try to like hurt hex or any anything like that. Um, I know this is completely side topic, okay. um, but I sort of just want to explain that like I love hex and I'm willing to fight for it and defend it. And I, and, I, and I don't think just because you own Hex or just because you have stakes, and even if those stakes are long, I don't think that all Hexicans are equal. I think there are some that are just better human beings than others. And I, and I, and I, I don't think I'm too far off on that. I think that's fair. It's true. I, mean, it's I, true. I would fair. agree. There's I some people that. that are go going to be more stable than others in certain ways and more 
uh, incentivized to do things in the best interest of a community. And then there's people that are more like rogue agents and they're just going to roll in and roll out. And that's okay too. But again, he's just highlighting that there are differences and, but, but I, but the one thing that people do on Twitter, it's not one person, it's a lot of people is they're kind of, they want a lot of credit for a lot of different things. And then they get tied up because they don't, you don't deserve credit for everything (laughs) even if you don't do it you know what i mean Mm -hmm. like that would be like me sitting here and just being like yeah i got in on day one no one knows my bags but let's go (laughs) on you know what i mean it would just be unauthentic it wouldn't be right it would be trying to get everyone to feel a certain way about me yeah like by saying i just have all this money but in reality it never matters being honest and transparent is always what will bring viewers what will bring value what will yeah i agree oh one second you're good. Yeah. Sam, any then, closing words? Uh, I would just say if you uh, want to check out uh, MRI, MRI, the, oh, yeah, UFC yeah, yeah. To- the UFC token, I did a video on it. Uh, maybe Bullish can drop it in the comments uh, if you want to check that out. I wouldn't say you should buy it, but if you find it interesting to learn about new projects, go check that out. Also, check out on Twitter. There's a link down below. Give a follow over there or Instagram, if you like, I'm not buying any MRI stuff. in this. In this, you don't, don't, don't. I would not. Hey, don't, yeah, don't, guys, don't, don't, guys, don't buy, sh- don't buy shit. No, but, but but Sam loves making the videos. But we tell everyone he makes videos on every crypto, everyone. So well, he will probably. But so he wants. I want to let everyone know that personally, after talking with Sam and reading about MRI a little bit, I will not be buying any MRI. I do not think. So. I'll try to encourage people not to buy it. <laughs> yeah, let's, I'll be fair. And this is financial advice. <laughs> yeah, be, yeah, don't buy it. <laughs> be, the last, the, the last thing, just be very selective where you put your money because if you put your money into the wrong thing, you can lose all of it. And I tell even people, even even people in the Pulse Doge chat, I've told them plainly and clearly, hey guys, this is an experiment. We don't know how it's going to turn out. We don't know if it's going to be successful. We don't know if it's going to get mass adoption. I try to bring a lot of honesty to something like that. Like I'm not just like out just shilling. I see it. I see it. Like we're like yeah, we're, 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 people get wrecked. It's like I want to actually like help people. But we have to be real with ourselves. We don't know what a market will do. We don't know if something will get adopted. I just say like, hey, let's just do the best job that we can. And so, but people need to be very very selective. Like for me, I don't just buy anything and hold a hundred assets. Uh, what do I care about? Hex, Pulse, Pulse X, Pulse Doge. I mean, Pulse X. These are the assets that I that I care about that I hold. And just for the closing words, the P- Pulse X is so cool. <laughs> Pulse X is going to be awesome. I'm not talking about the price movement. I'm just talking about uh, the tokenomics. Like if you look at what Uniswap did with the uh, duct taped on token, it is very stupid. Um, because the token makes no difference with anything but in in um in pulse x there's a little bit of, there's game theory there and there's a buy and burn and lots of stuff so we're i'm really excited about all that guys we're going to be coming at you tomorrow trying to get wendy's or molly to come on tomorrow but even if they don't me and sam are going to be doing our research tonight guys and tomorrow we're coming at you live every Thank single you. day at 11 a.m eastern we're all very excited for the pulse chain launch but guys I don't have any expectations from the works of others, nor do I give a shit. So I just enjoy my life and move on. And if it comes out next year, I don't care. If it comes out tomorrow, I don't care. I'm going to move forward and just try to be level-headed about everything. Hey, if you guys want a fun chat to go into during this like bloody bear market where everyone is like super salty, join us in Pulse Doge chat. I'm, it's, it's a lot, I'm serious. It's a lot of fun. A lot of memes, a lot of like just everyone's like, like happy and posting pictures of dogs. It's like, they're having a good time. I think during this time, you got to like take care of your mental health, close some price charts, maybe go into a chat that's like fun and and maybe avoid the ones that are more toxic and like where everyone's just like a salty bag holder Um, and, and go out and like maybe go for a walk, go into a park, eat some good food, spend some time with the wife or girlfriend or kids or, or boyfriend or whatever. You know what I mean? Like have a, have a good time. Enjoy life. Like even though it makes some money. Yeah, try to, try to make some money and cut back on expenses. Maybe, maybe instead of getting that steak dinner, yes. maybe a, uh, even for like guys like me, cook, cook a, a one pound bag of pasta, add some butter and fresh Parmesan, and you can feed the whole family for $5. Yes. That's right. That's what we yes. do. I love all that stuff, guys. I'm out, guys. Crypto yeah. in the morning. Retweet, Please. like. 
do all this stuff, guys. If you like this show, you should be sharing it on Twitter. Please you should be Twitter. sharing it. Comment. Guys, we're going to be here every single day. We're going to have a great platform for the Hexicans and other people to come on. And once we get bigger, people will be cool about coming on. It's going to be so fun. We can have whoever on. I have big, big dreams for this channel, guys. Okay? So I'm excited, guys. Everyone have a wonderful day. We'll outro it now, baby. Young folks, you tripping on them, motherfucker. Rich and hard. Rich and hard. Bought my hex from the fucking start. Uh -huh. Point one in every day we mark. Bought my hex from the fucking start. Uh -huh. Sacrificing all this bread like I'm rich and hurt. Got paid on big payday and I had a hit restart. Now I'm checking on my pulls just to check my heart. Uh -huh. Buy my hex from the fucking start Sacrificing all this bread like I'm rich and hurt Got paid on big payday and I had a hit restart Now I'm checking on my pulls just to check my heart Checking my Metamax moving Look at the hex he has mooning Looking at why they be choosing Peter is why they be losing Pro chains out and get me a check He's gas up and got me a mess Remember the times he died collect Hex I'm eating I'm dying in the best Getting this back like a year ago Getting this post, I ain't letting go Swerve on the ring like a Lambo Getting this back like a year ago Getting this post, I ain't letting go Swerve on the ring like a Lambo Buy my hex from the fucking start Sacrificing all this bread like I'm rich and hurt Got paid on big payday and I had a hit restart Now I'm checking on my pulls just to check my heart Buy my hex from the fucking start Sacrificing all this bread like I'm rich and hurt Got 